Good evening, everyone. It's uh, Rob here, ProSynth Network Live, uh, episode 136. Um, it's just gone 7 p.m. in the UK, and uh, uh, all you guys and girls in America, thankfully, you've now caught back up with us uh, since last week's uh, staggered daylight saving shift. Oh, why did they just get rid of it? Let's just all stick with the one. Uh, it gets very confusing for me and uh, for you guys as well, I think. Uh, anyway, so we're back uh, normal time and it will stay like this and for another six months. Um, by which time I hope it's um, the weather's improved and the nights are longer. Um, welcome to the show as normal. We've got a great guest for you. Um, I will introduce them shortly. Before I do, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Uh, please make sure that if you haven't already... Uh, Give us, a, give us a subscribe, hit the bell, get notifications, then you won't have to worry about time shifts and changes because it'll always update you with the correct time zone. Um, if you want to talk to us during the show, you've got the chat window just over there, I believe. Uh, if you're watching after the show and you want to leave comments, please do just down below and hit that like button um, if you want. That would be fantastic if you do. And if there's anybody that you think would love to watch the show and don't already do so, please do share us around. Um, if you want to get in touch with us on social media, as always, we are across all of those uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, where the main group page is, and of course, right here on YouTube. And our mm -hmm. handle uh, is at ProSynth Network uh, across all of those. Um, if you want to buy some merchandise, as modeled by myself and my co hosts tonight, there are t shirts, there are polo shirts. There are really exceptionally good hoodies. I, I wear mine almost every day now, um, especially as the temperatures are dropping. Um, they're all available at vipergraphics.co.uk. Unfortunately, they are UK-based, so uh, those of you outside of the UK, thanks Brexit, um, might have to pay a little bit extra in terms of uh, postage and duties, but it's worth every penny. Uh, and we do get a little bit of that, so it does help us keep the channel going. Um, so if you want some merch, then please go and visit that there. The link will be also in the description below. Um, if again, if you want to donate and you don't want to buy any merchandise because you've got enough decent t-shirts, then uh, you can all, always donate um, to our channel. Uh, there's the link to our PayPal donation page. Um, you can donate any amount. N nothing's too big, nothing's too small. We are super grateful for everything. And of course, you can also donate using the Super Chat and Super Stickers. Again, that side, yeah. Uh, underneath the chat window, you can do that and send us uh, a few pennies. That would be fantastic. That keeps us going and pays for everything. So, fantastic. If you have a question for our guest or for uh, any of us tonight, just stick a nice big capital Q in the front of it, and that just helps us pick it out as they go flying by, and then we can put them into a little uh, bucket, and then we can pick them out and fire them at our guests uh, later on. <sighs> right, that's all that stuff out of the way. Um, let's let's go around the room. Let's bring in our uh, co-hosts. First of all, let's bring in Mr. Ben Simpson. He's he's with us again. He's not gigging tonight. How are you, sir? You're muted. That's what you are. Look at that. Drink. Prof audio professionals. Ah. There you go. <laughs> I'm muted, but not anymore. Nah. I've been looking at the chat, and we've got, like, all the regulars are in here, and that's great. But it's it's quite busy already, and Excellent. there's even a couple of questions come through already for Marcus. Oh, stick them so, in the bucket, yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've been adding them to the list. And as you say, just stick a capital Q on there mm. so we can spot it easy. Yeah, Brilliant. looking forward to it. Um. Have you got a heater in there now because you've just got a shirt on? Or is it just warm up there at the moment? Uh, it's not as cold as it was last week. Uh, it was absolutely was bitter you were last week. You chattering, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Dear, yeah. Dear. It's, it's uh, a lot it's grim up, more comfy tonight. Yeah, good. Good stuff. And it's a nice polo shirt you've got on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah this is from that. Viper Graphics. Yeah. Right. I need to get one of those. I need to yeah. one of those out. Yeah. Good to see you, mate, as always. And uh, let's come back down to the south of the country and bring in uh, Synth repairer extraordinaire mr kent spong how are Watch you sir out. how are you feeling today because yesterday you weren't too sharp yeah i haven't uh, cut anything off i haven't <laughs> broken anything <laughs> um everything's where it's supposed to be um i've had some sleep what excellent else? um yeah generally generally good excellent stuff yep. good 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 um busy not today, but yes, no. I will be tomorrow. Oh. I have, funny enough, several Oberheims to do. Okay. Um, 
uh, what else? There, oh no, there's a there's a ton of stuff down there. There's a ton of okay. stuff down there. But yeah, busy, busy, Pays busy, bills. busy, busy. Good, good, good. Yeah, lovely stuff. Good to see you as always, Ken. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's introduce our very special guest. Um, mm. We are super honoured and delighted to welcome this gentleman to the show. Um, he'll, he'll be no stranger to you. His name is synonymous with. Um, Oberheim, of course, and uh, various other companies and organisations throughout music technology, uh, which we'll obviously speak to him about. But let's uh, introduce the one and the only, Mr. Marcus Ryle. Welcome to the show. Yay. Hi, guys. Happy How are you here. today? Doing well, thanks. Yep. The and this young. is, I mean, that is an actual physical backdrop, not one of those they're, they're, made they're up real, ones. Yeah. Look at that. That's, a, <laughs> that's an amazing collection. Um, before we start, first of all, I want to say thank you ever so much for indulging us a couple of weeks ago when Manny and Andy visited you and you offered to give us a, a tour of that uh, wonderful collection, which, of course, a lot was what we see behind you that you'd taken over there. So thank you ever so much for that. That was super interesting and really, oh, was, really that special. Was so, that, was all, that show was a lot of fun. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so thank you ever so much for that. Um, we will come to you in just a moment and start chatting about your career and your history and all things kind of with the, the, the Oberheim revamp and everything. Um, but before we do, um, I just want to take this opportunity. So um, earlier this week, the, the very sad news came through that um, the great Don Lewis had passed away. And um, it was a really sad piece of news to read. And um, we were we were really trying to to get him onto the show um as soon as we could and we you know i've been talking to don and ned who's directed this amazing film uh, about his life um and we were just kind of negotiating things and then you know don took ill uh, some while back and has kind of been um in and out of uh hospital and, and not feeling great so we just said Look, okay we'll, we'll wait until the right moment and unfortunately that moment uh won't come uh unfortunately for us but um, what I wanted to do was um, just read a few words that I'd got from Julie, his wife, um, who our thoughts are with at this moment, and also with Ned and the rest of um, Don's family. So if you don't mind, I would like to just do that, and then we'll get into the show proper. So let me just uh, get this here. I've, I've tried to make it big so I don't have to put my glasses on, so excuse me while I do this. Um, and I thought I'd just prepare a few images of Don's career um, so I shall just put those up on the screen whilst I just read this uh, this this out here. Um, yeah, so Don Lewis, uh, an internationally recognised electronic instrument pioneer, performer, composer and educator, passed away uh, peacefully on November 6, 2022, surrounded by family after a brief illness. His musical career spanned over 54 years and included significant contributions as a sound designer, instrument designer and programmer for Hammond, Roland, Yamaha and ARP. He appeared on symphony stages and nightclubs alike, including performances at the Sydney Opera House, Carnegie Hall and the Apollo Theatre in Harlem. Lewis has also collaborated with some of the most iconic names in the music industry, including Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Billy Preston and the Beach Boys. He was born in Dayton, Ohio established his professional music career in Denver, Colorado before moving to LA and eventually the Bay Area. While in Colorado, he also served in the US Air Force as a nuclear weapons specialist, but concert performances were never far away. In 1981, Lewis eventually settled in Pleasanton, California. One of his many achievements happened in the mid-1970s with his conception and creation of LEO, the Live Electronic Orchestra, in which he combined multiple synthesizers and sound modules controlled through a network of keyboards, predating major manufacturers by 10 years until the introduction of MIDI in 1983. The historical significance of LEO has been recognised by the music industry as a pivotal technol technological achievement and continues to be honoured as an exhibit at NAMM's Museum of Making Music in Carlsbad, California. A feature-length documentary on Lewis's life and career will debut on PBS in the United States in February 2023, titled Don Lewis and the Live Electronic Orchestra. More information on the film can be found at donlewisleo.com. The official trailer can be viewed on this site as well. 
Lewis was also known for his international commitment to early music education through the creation of his Say Yes to Music concert and educational program produced with his loving wife, Julie. Lewis served as an inspiration to countless musicians, industry leaders, fans and music scholars worldwide. Don was 81 years old. And on a personal note, I'd just like to say, you know, thank you, Don, for the last few years. Your friendship meant a heck of a lot to me. It was an absolute honour to know you and to see that smile so often. Um, it was a real treat. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And my love goes out to, to Julie uh, and his boys and, of course, Ned and the rest of his friends and family. Don Lewis, everyone. Oh, sad, thank sad, sad. Yeah, um, if, I, if I can add, uh, I, was, yeah. Don, I mean, for many people, many people even watching this may not be familiar with Don, but he was, he was, uh, of course, an amazing pioneer, really ahead of his time, doing, doing things that, uh, you know, today we take for granted long before yeah. MIDI existed and collaborating with many people. But he also had to, he had to deal with, with uh, racism in this country. Oh. He had to deal with fighting the musicians union who got quite concerned about uh, him sounding like a whole orchestra as one person. Yep. And yet through all of that, his, uh, what's what, if you didn't know him, you may not be aware of his, his, his spirit and his heart were just uh, truly incredible. In fact, mm. we have a small group that gets together for a, a zoom lunch every Wednesday, which Don's a part of. And uh, just last week on Wednesday, Don joined us uh from home in hospice because he just wanted to see us all and and thank us all for our friendship and his his spirit and his positivity and his love just still was just shining bright right to the very yeah. end and really really is a special human being absolutely so we'll be um, yeah well said well said um I mean, my experience with Don was no, I never met him physically in person, which I, I will you know, regret for the rest of my life. But I did spend many hours with him on, on calls and exchanging emails. And, you know, they say you can hear somebody smile. Uh, you yes. couldn't just hear his smile. Um, you could, you know, when he was even in his words, they, they were just joy. It was just everything was just full of joy. And I've never really met anybody who's so full of just absolute joy and happiness and passion. Exactly. Oh my word, the passion was just, it's incredible. Um, so yeah, um, and as you mentioned there, his, I mean, not only did he uh, come up with a way of getting instruments to talk to each other a decade before Dave Smith and the rest of those guys got together and formulated MIDI. Um, you know, Kakahashi Sam would credit him with inspiration um, for, for yeah. you know, some, getting that that sort of stuff together and it was you know a testament to his engineering skills which of course you know he was a nuclear uh, weapons engineer so you know that's some serious engineering right there um he was just you know he, when, um, when i interviewed him he, he had his tools kind of over here and his instruments over here he was just always involved in that um and but not only that as you say he, he f had so many battles to fight the musicians union the whole thing that you know one guy and all these instruments yeah. they were frightened of him putting other musicians out of work which he never did and he won he fought and fought yes. and won and then of course the racism as well which was just shocking so um if if and when you can get to watch this film please please do so the dvd is available i know that certainly for, for the people here in the uk i don't know what it's like in the us but if you go to amazon um and look for just just search for Don Lewis and you'll find a version of the film that was released on DVD and it will be an import and it will probably be region one. So you'll need a, a player that can do multi-region stuff, but do I get it if you can. It's still available on Amazon in the U S. Oh, too. cool. Excellent stuff. Definitely worth checking out. It's yeah. And the, the, the cut that's going to go out on PBS next year has been slightly rejigged and had some extra bits put in. I think a few other little bits taken out, but nothing too tra uh, drastic. Um, but it will be on PBS, and that's all free to air in the US. So, yeah, February, uh, keep an eye out. And if you want to keep up with all things related to Don Lewis and the Live Electronic Orchestra movie, 
Um, the website is, as I said before, donlewisleo.com. We'll put the link below uh, a little bit later there. Um, all the news is there. There's a, you know Don's story. There's Ned, who's an amazing director, who's been so, so passionate about getting Don's uh, life documented, and I'm so grateful that he did. Um, but it's all there, so please do go and visit. There we go. Sad news, but um, what a life, what a legacy, and we celebrate that. Um, uh, well, we'll celebrate it for a very, very long time. Right. Okay. Um, so let's come to you, Marcus. Um, Marcus Ryle um, coming to us um, because I guess uh, your name and your persona has been thrust back into the fore yet again in the last year or two with the, the re-emergence of Tom Oberheim and his brand, which he has now got back in under his control, largely in part to your you know incredible dedication and work and i've been doing my research i've been speaking to mr spears and he's been telling me lots of stuff about the <laughs> battles you fought and and you know on tom's behalf and super grateful for you doing that um before we come to talk about oberheim um yeah. can you tell us a little bit about how you got into this business that we call music technology what was your what was your first instance of getting into it what, you know where did, where did it all come from well, uh, I guess the time context is, is maybe helpful. I was born in 1961, so you can figure out, figure out my age. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that happened to be a, a pretty good time to be coming of age in the, with regards to the, the, the birth of, of uh, popular synthesizers. Mm. And uh, although I know many people's first introduction uh, was Wendy Carlos's uh, Switched on Bach. In my case, my dad brought home uh, a record by Dick Hyman that just said Moog, had a picture of a lunar module on it. I don't know if you're familiar with this record. <laughs> I think I've said, yeah. Mm. But I think it came out in 69 or so, and uh, maybe 70, somewhere around that time. And um, I remember just, that was my first time ever hearing a synthesizer, and I was, I was literally hooked from that point on. I, I'd been playing piano, um, and, you know, was interested in music in general and interested in technology, but, uh, the, basically the sonic landscapes just ended up becoming, uh, for me as important as the notes you choose. And so, um, not that there aren't many great songs that are purely mm -hmm. about, uh, the harmony and melody, regardless of what instrument you play on, there's something about, uh, about timbres and sonic um, complexity that uh, for me is really uh, can really transport you into music making so yeah. uh, that just that began my quest so probably around around 10 years old nine years old that uh, I had to get a synthesizer um, and uh, I guess I've just never stopped since then my first <laughs> oh I gotta point the right way on the yeah. my first <laughs> this an, uh, a white face arp odyssey I, yeah. when I was 12 years old, I finally saved up enough money to, to get one of those and started taking it apart and, uh, trying to understand how it worked. Mm -hmm. And, um, from there, uh, uh, you know, was playing in bands and, uh, playing with more gear and learning more about it. And, um, and then, uh, a long, long story short, I, I, uh, happened to meet Tom Oberheim after I turned 19 and he offered me a job and that uh that was kind of the beginning of my professional career back in 1980. Was was that an accidental meeting or did you kind of engineer that yourself did you, you know, put yourself in in places where people like that were or how did how uh, did that meeting come about? Well I get I mean first of all I just had the advantage of you know being born in Los Angeles mm -hmm. over I was was in Los Angeles that was convenient I uh you know at age 19 I was still, you know, imagining that maybe my career was I was going to be a rock star, you know, and try to be the next Keith Emerson or something, which was <laughs> was uh, uh, a little a little too uh, maybe too ambitious, but appropriate for the age. Um, and uh, I was at uh, a university called Cal State Dominguez Hills that had a um, a great uh, recording studio, sixteen track, two inch, three M machine three ARP 2600s, uh, uh, I, I, it was a great synthesizer lab and I was actually teaching some classes there and uh, 
another long story I won't bore you with, but we managed to uh, maneuver to get what was the only Sinclair one on the West Coast oh, wow. back in 1979. Um, and, uh, and I was, um, I'd managed to convince them to give me the source code as well because I wanted to program it to do some new things. And I was teaching a, a class in, in uh, advanced digital synthesis, 1979. Nice. However advanced it could be back then, but yeah. you know, writing, <laughs> writing code in XPL and making wavetables and FM and doing fun mm. stuff like that. And um, my understanding is Tom Oberheim um, what, knew Richard Bunger, who was the director of the, the department, and he'd gotten wind that we had a Sinclair and was interested to come down and see it wow. and gave a guest lecture for my class. Um, brought, uh, we asked him if he maybe could bring down an OBX with him. That would be mm. nice. So I got a chance <laughs> to play an OBX. Um, in 79 and uh and showed him showed him the saint mm -hmm. oh. is he frozen there? to me frozen to um to have a real job you know mm -hmm. uh, and, but after after showing him the synth uh, tom tom offered me a job wow. and uh, it's uh, not too surprising. What had, what sealed the deal is I said, well, if I take the job, would I be able to have an OBX? And, <laughs> um, he said, sure. They could, you know, they I could uh, be lent one to so have one to use because there was certainly no way I would have been able to afford an OBX yeah. um, at that time. So that was that was pretty uh, compelling um, uh, incentive, and so that was that's how uh, I got started. So during your time at Oberheim, you had your hands in obviously a lot of great instruments at you know what was the the big kind of boom era for for synthesizers, uh, particularly in popular music. Um, what was your involvement? Uh, and, and, you know, what did you have your hands in in terms of the the Oberheim instruments of that day? Well, I, I worked there for five years, so basically everything Oberheim was doing from 1980 to 1985. Uh, the OBXA uh, development had already started on that when I was uh, when I joined, um, and they were kind enough to let me uh, throw throw some wrenches in the works and add <laughs> add a few capabilities, uh, which was a good way to to learn. Um, the DSX uh, was the first project that okay. I was um, largely responsible for, so I defined that product. That was a polyphonic sequencer before MIDI. Um, and uh, and wrote all the code for that product. But then, so from OBXA, DSX, DMX, OB8, Matrix Expander, Matrix Twelve, uh, Matrix Six. That would be the the era that awesome. I was so, uh, great designing it over on. Yeah, most so, most of the products that you see. Over yes, here. yeah, literally <laughs> one of everything. There is amazing. Um, so. Your time at Oberheim came to an end, sort of like mid nineteen eighties, or just oh. after that. Did I lose you? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's, it just froze there for me. I don't know if it froze for everyone else. Um, I was, I was it, just going to ask. Can, can, I'll blame my Wi-Fi. Sorry. About <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you? You can hear us again. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Awesome. Right. I was going to say, um, so your time at Oberheim came to an end roughly sort of the mid 1980s or maybe just after? 85. Uh, April 19th, 1985. Uh, as mm -hmm. it turns out, about five weeks before they filed for bankruptcy. Um, I don't claim to be the uh, cause or effect. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I did, I, I turned 24 and um, uh, things, it had been an amazing experience and you know probably the best school i could have gone to um but uh i did have desires to try to do to do more things than just the things that uh oberheim was doing and also mm -hmm. had some uh, some indications that there might be some business trouble on the horizon right. for, yeah. for oberheim so i left uh left on good terms uh in april and um and then uh, started the next adventure. Which was? Which was, uh, well, another engineer at Oberheim, Michel Dwadig, who was 
made amazing contributions to uh, to all the synthesizers, folks people love. He and I had uh, I kind of likened it to a, a songwriting team when it came to the the technical side of developing products. We just we worked really well together, had complementary mm-hmm. skills, and we thought it would be great to be able to you know design a broader range of products. But we also were uh, a little um, we recognized we didn't necessarily have uh, business acumen and seeing how Oberheim had gotten into trouble. And of course, we know historically, you know, Roger Lynn, Bob Moog, Dave Smith, um, Alan R. Perlman, uh, pretty much everybody in that era with amazing technology, amazing innovations ran into business trouble. So we thought if we we love developing products, if we could develop products for other companies and let them deal with the business side and the sales and marketing side, that would be a pretty great thing to do. So mm. um, uh, basically Michelle and myself and my wife, Susan Wolf, who handled all of the, the, the business side uh, for us, the three of us started this little company called Fast Forward Designs. And our first client was a German company called Dynacord. Uh, mm-hmm. where we designed a, uh, a uh, what was the ad one. It was a digital drum set we started working on in 1985 and launched in 1986. Oh, and uh, yeah. then we were kind of off to the races. We did about 40 products with Alesis. We did products with Digidesign, now Avid, um, Fostex, Studer, um, and... Uh, CAE, we did a MIDI lighting controller. Um, okay. So for about 10 years, we were developing products for other companies, some of which are also behind me. Uh, you know, the, the and over here, the ADAT, for those of you old enough to remember. Yes, of course. Era, yeah. um, mm-hmm. uh, Quadriverb, Quadrasense, HR16, SR16, MMT8, um, oh. and like things that like was that. The- that Elise's heyday, wasn't it? Did you have any involvement with the Andromeda? No, at that time I was busy with some other things. I gave uh, I gave a few opinions um, and suggestions, but they had a very very capable team, and mm-hmm. that was certainly an ambitious undertaking given that they yeah. made new custom analog integrated circuits. Mm-hmm. But that was that would be the one keyboard in that later Elise's era that we were not involved in, right? So what what time did um, Line Six come into play? Was that good question? After that? Well, yeah, we you know after after close to ten years of developing products for other companies, we felt that uh, I mean two things happened. First, we felt we'd had you know again some great uh, education, being able to see how several other companies worked and what we thought worked and what didn't work, <clears throat> and um, it also seemed to us we'd done you know, uh, best selling drum machines, reverbs, keyboards, tape recorders, um, you know, the, the keyboard player, we, the, the, uh, the producer, songwriter technology had really opened up a lot of doors and we really felt mm-hmm. that the guitar player was being left behind. And, um, so, uh, we started just doing a, our own internal research. Um, it was a great, uh, sometimes, Technology innovations happen because you have a good uh, intersection of of events. And there was a um, we had been designing custom DSPs for the Elisa's products because there really wasn't affordable DSP available to do that sort of thing. So um, around I think in '94 or so, I discovered a a relatively low cost DSP chip that TI Japan had developed for the emerging world of surround sound and things like that and uh that seemed like it might be powerful enough to do uh this notion of of digital modeling so we just started doing research and and when we thought hey maybe we have something here we decided it was time to uh start our own brand and Mm -hmm. start making products yeah, because those those line six products were certainly the, the early ones, very distinctive. You know, the kidney <clears throat> shape, and you know, that everyone you know want. I remember, you know, I was playing in bands at the time, and all the guys uh, with guitars had line six units. Uh, yep, just yeah, I have just one like here. That one. Look at that. There's a. Yeah. There we go. That's a. That's an original, original yeah. pod. 
Um, nice. It was another great lesson in product design for me. I'm, I'm, uh, my first, uh, you know, when I first proposed we make something like this, um, I, it's sad to say that what I propose is, well, let's just make a, a rack unit. You know, mm. it was the same controls of what a pod is, same features. We we'll just make it, you know, put it in a rack. It just, that just seemed very practical, maybe very keyboard player like of me. <laughs> and fortunately, we had some creative people in the company that they they really felt concerned that it just would get it get lost in a rack. Mm. Uh, racks were going sometimes going in and out of favor with guitar players. It was a little on the downswing right then. And um, combined with the notion that digital for guitar players was still kind of a bad word, you know, that nothing, nothing sounded good that was digital for guitar players mm -hmm. back in the nineties. And so, um, the idea was given that it should be, it should look organic. It shouldn't have any straight lines. It should be some sort of curved desktop thing so it can mm -hmm. stand out. And, uh, again, a happy accident, you could say in terms of what I understand now about marketing, Seth Godin has a book called purple cow. Yeah, which I would say that the pod definitely qualifies as a purple cow. We just didn't know it at the time because its distinct look really helped to get it noticed. Of course, it had to deliver and sound good for anyone to care about it, but um, that ended up being a real important milestone for Line 6. That we uh, Things really took off once we launched the pod. Yeah, because I, I remember, I mean, I'm not being a guitarist, I didn't um, go into that world. But as a Reason, Propellerhead Reason user, there were Line 6 module software versions of Line 6 stuff within the Reason rack for a period of time. And then that very kind of mysteriously and abruptly stopped. Um, and I was finding, you know, using that with synthesizers was, you know, it was great, you know, fun to put stuff through that. Was that around the time were you involved in, in those kind of software versions? Sure. Yeah. We Well, remember, we did, uh, we were a pioneer actually before pod even shipped we delivered amp farm which was mm. um for pro tools only it was a tdm amp modeling plugin so we were uh we were very early in um into that world and i've been a, a reason fan since the beginning and love the team there and we actually for a time line six was a distributor in the u.s for propeller head oh, wow. and we proposed uh putting some of the software algorithms into reason so that wow. relationship went on for a, a while i don't recall exactly when that ended it's possible at the time when once line six was sold to yamaha in 2014 it might have been some feelings for some folks that well but yamaha also owns steinberg and is yeah. steinberg competitive with propeller head so i think propeller head just decided to um to phase out the the line six models which was yeah fine and certain uh, yeah which are... it, it kicked i remember it kicked up a real stink in the in the communities because you know obviously lots of people have been making uh songs and music with these these plugins and then all of a sudden they stopped and nobody gave well certainly nobody from propeller had gave uh, a clear explanation and everyone assumed that it was because line six had been acquired by yamaha and of course there was the steinberg connection so um there was there was kind of uh for a period of time there was a bit of um bad feeling for you know propeller head just doing that and leaving everyone in the lurch without any kind of replacement i mean they've since kind of gone on and done that stuff and of course amp modeling is now kind of everywhere isn't it i mean but you were literally at the forefront of all of that yeah that was uh it was good times now it is yeah pretty much you know commodity um yeah. you know you can get it for free in garage band and yeah um that's great i think it's great because look the more people have access to the you know the technology and the capabilities the more people that can be created and making music so it's mm. all good so um, let's skip forward now because I want to get to the you know the, the more recent stuff. Um, sure. Where did the whole resurrection of the Oberheim brand and company that we now see today? Where did that all begin? Why? I mean, was Tom itching to get back in? Did he take some persuading? How were you involved? Well, um, I mean, first of all, really the the beginning of the resurrection of of Oberheim is purely Tom 
on his own because he'd been doing other things and around, I believe it was 2009, um, mm -hmm. with a lot of encouragement from the resurgence of interest in analog, he uh, reissued the, the SEM, you know, his, his original expander module. Um, and uh, that, that kind of resurrected it. Now, he had some legitimate concerns about what he could even call it because he had not owned the Oberheim brand name or the yeah. logo since mm -hmm. 1985. Um, and since 1988 or so, 87, 88, it had been owned by Gibson, mm -hmm. but Gibson didn't seem to be using it. So he'd been given some simple legal advice that he he's probably would be safe to just sign his name because certainly Tom Oberheim is still his name. Yeah. So not use it really as a trademark, but so it had Tom Oberheim signature and he came out with the SEM and he made, um, he made several, several hundred. He made, uh, three different versions of the SEM. He made his, he reissued the two voice, which was his favorite of the old, um, the old, uh, Oberheim series. Mm -hmm. So Tom was doing, doing that, uh, quite reasonably well on his own and kind of as, separately and originally without him even knowing I, i'll just say that i it just always really bothered me that he didn't own his name and uh you know i remember having conversations with bob moog during the period when he didn't own his name and and uh you know sensing the frustration he went through and he he was able to prevail and regain control of his name again and it just seemed to me that um tom should have his name and I, I think Tom had, he just didn't imagine that was something that was possible or even worth pursuing. So I probably started about 10 years ago, um, initially approaching Gibson since they didn't seem to be using it. Um, Henry Juskowitz was running Gibson at the time. And I asked him, if, you know, is there any chance he'd consider, you know, giving the name back to Tom? Um, and I even asked him to, you know, name a price. And unfortunately, he just wasn't interested, even though he wasn't using the name, he wanted to hang on to it. Um, but then that version of Gibson went bankrupt, as uh, as luck would have it. And uh, and a new CEO was put in place, uh, J.C. Curley, who I approached um, at, uh, I think, the first NAM show of that era of Gibson, which I believe would have been in 2019. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I told him the whole story, right? I mean, Tom is a legend. He's one of the, the few original synthesizer pioneers still around. He's a real person. It's his name. Gibson's not using this. And yeah, I think it'd be a really great gesture for him to to uh, give it back. And he, he agreed on the spot. It was fantastic. Wow. He was wow. he really understood. Despite being new to our industry, um, he wasn't new to music. He's a guitar player and beat, you know, he had heard of the brand and so on. And so that began the the possibility of, well, maybe Tom really could have his name back. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, it got, it was more complicated because by that time, Gibson had allowed the trademark to lapse in some countries or had abandoned it because you have to keep using a trademark if you want to yeah. keep the rights to it. And, um, and uh, as, he legally had the right to do, Uli Beringer had begun registering the Oberheim mark in several countries. Oh. So now, uh, so we, we had the, the Oberheim brand back in the US, but not in other countries. So right. um, that took uh, another, another year or so of, uh, mm -hmm. of discussions, but <laughs> Uli did uh, give back Tom all of the marks. Uh, and that was last year. Yes. And wow. um, that's really what cleared the way for to to be able to have that that classic Oberheim name and logo on a synthesizer again. So yeah. it was a pretty exciting so, time. So tell us about the the OBX eight, which is this. I mean, I've yeah. I've had my hands on one a couple of times now at various shows, and it is incredible. It's just that sound, that feel, that that look of quality building. It's it's just a pure classic Oberheim. It's not cut any corners in any any fashion at all. Where did the uh, where did the genesis of that instrument start? And 
uh, how involved was Dave Smith from that very beginning? How involved were you from that that sort of uh, sure. starting point? Well, first of all, it's it's a product that never could have happened without Dave Smith. So, mm-hmm. you know, he uh, he what he did. And I mean, frankly, I feel the the gift he gave to the industry and in, in making that happen is really tremendous. Um, mm. But he, uh, uh, Tom and Dave had collaborated once before they did the ob6 i think that yes. came out in 2015 mm-hmm. or so again it didn't say oberheim on it it had tom oberheim's signature yeah. and it was inspired by the older oberheims it had the state variable filter from the sems and um and the blue lines and so on but it was it's a fantastic synthesizer it's kind of like a modern take on oberheim and mm-hmm. very well received very popular synthesizer so they knew they could collaborate um and you know i think dave resisted for a long time to um revisit his his old hits so to speak and <laughs> uh bring back the profit five but he did finally uh uh decide to do that he and his team and i think uh, the you know the response to the profit five uh reissue the rev four was just amazing yeah. and that that kind of uh led the path to say to start talking with tom and with with me um to say well so what if we really what if we could do a real uh a real oberheim reissue so to speak or just you know really um uh you know design something that used the the same circuitry as the originals and that those discussions actually happened before we'd secured the worldwide uh marks for Oberheim. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a product that uh, that was already, you know, in discussions. And um, I, uh, you know, I hadn't worked on a synthesizer in a long time, <laughs> been involved in, in the guitar world for many decades. That was my, my uh, lost in the wilderness era as a keyboard player, <laughs> um, making products that I really couldn't demonstrate at all, which is uh, <laughs> kind of sad. But um, uh, very proud of what we did at Line Six, and proud of what Line Six continues to do. But the the notion of being able to work on a synthesizer again was was pretty compelling. And uh, you know, my only requirements. Did I lose you again, or did it? Sorry, it just paused just a little bit. But you're back. Oh, good. I'll. Um, <laughs> it's probably telling me I'm talking too much, right? Uh, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Uh, um, <laughs> You know my 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 request with the team, and they were they were game for it, and Dave was was game for it, even though he sometimes would tease me about uh, about the level of detail. But it was I I really wanted to make something that truly was a hundred percent of all of those old synths. I mean that was what got me into this stuff in the first place. And OBX, OBXA, OB8, that OB series, it seemed possible that we should be able to have all of that hardware capability, all that software capability. And for me, the ultimate test was gonna be, it needs to have all the original factory presets and even be able to load the original cassettes because it's not it's not modeling, it's not emulation, it's not, you know, can it be close? It should be, there's no reason it can't be exact mm-hmm. with the caveat, of course, that it's exact to, to my units, which are properly calibrated um mm-hmm. they and, and and have had old components replaced um you know every single obx sounds a little different so yeah um but uh we we just went through incredible detail and the team at sequential uh yeah i can't say enough great things about them i mean these are dedicated synthesizer uh developers that uh david handpicked and he built a great team of you know hardware engineers mechanical software and um you know they they had to do a lot of heavy lifting i did a lot of measurement and uh uh, design assist and even managed to resurrect the original ob8 software i've got an old hp 64000 development system from the 80s with five and a quarter inch floppies and i have the original floppy disks from the ob8 and I was able to get that thing working long enough to read the data off the disks and have all the original 
Z80 assembly code that we wrote oh, wow. back in the OBA, which ended up being, I, I mean, the, the project ended up being much more difficult than I even imagined. And had I not had that original code, um, I think it would have been really difficult to match exactly mm. every parameter value of all the page two features, some of which are very quirky and are, mm -hmm. are, uh, are constrained by the limitations of that processor, which we, the, the team uh, was able to recreate perfectly. It's like, here's exactly the timing. Here's exactly what happens to the control voltage. We can just replicate it exactly from the code. That was, that was pretty cool, really, to be able mm -hmm. to go to that detail. I found yeah. three bugs in the OB8 in the process. That was fun. Oh too. wow! On the original, <laughs> but I'm not going to go back and fix them. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no should, updates. Oh well, <laughs> no, no updates for the original OB8. Yeah, sorry. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, ben, did we have a question about the OBX8 in the chat? I think we did. Just let me get back here. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's from Wagyu who says we had talk of Easter eggs at Synthplex. Are there any Easter eggs hidden in the OBX8? Isn't that half the fun, like finding them? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I I don't I don't think I could I could speak to that. You could always go hunting and find find if you yeah. like. We did. Uh, <laughs> We did talk about um, some of the Easter eggs in the in the old products. That was kind yeah. of that was fun, and I, I guess I, we didn't I didn't we didn't know to call them Easter eggs. I'm not sure who coined the phrase Easter eggs. It's a good no. one. We called it the High Mom page mm. because, and it, I think I was the first. I might have been the first to do it in this industry because the DSX had a 16 character alphanumeric display, and mm -hmm. which sounds silly today but it was such a big deal back then that the original oberheim ads even had a picture of the display and says actual 16 character display <laughs> like because you know product mi products didn't have displays on them so it did occur to me i'm you know i was a cocky 19 20 year old that uh you know i should i've got a display i should i should put my name i should sign sign my work so to speak and <laughs> I called it the high mom page because, you know, anytime a, a camera would be like randomly, uh, you know, panning a crowd, you know, what typically happens, people wave and say, hi, mom, <laughs> right, so they can get noticed. So, so if you push my birth date on the number buttons of the DSX, my name comes up on the display. And that became, that became a new, uh, a new fun thing to ha have. So all the Oberheim products have, have uh, high mom pages or Easter eggs like that. And we did that in many of the Alesis products and so on. There were times, depending on management of the companies we were working with, believe it or not, that they uh, they didn't they didn't like there being little hidden oh, really? things and they would have to take them out. So, which we would comply since it's their yeah. product. Well, yeah, mm. yeah. Because um, I know that uh, Emu used to do a lot of that stuff as well. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and the the, uh, the emulators and the uh, the um, the Emax twos I've got have got a couple of and there's one where you actually see an emu running across the display, um, which is just weird. That's great. Um, but yeah, there are someone some, maybe it with Kurzweil put like a like a little game of pong or something on it. Yeah, the units. yeah, somebody put just, a pong game. <laughs> Ken, yeah, do you K have K two thousand, wasn't it? Oh, it was K two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, cool. yeah. There's another question. Uh, from St uh, Stark Ravine, uh, asking if there's any chance of a desktop version of the OBX 8M. Yeah, any chance? I guess I could answer that cl that question to say I imagine there's there's always a chance, but I don't think <laughs> I could say anything Didn't more you just than put that. it on a desk. <laughs> yeah, just put yeah. just, just, just put, put it on a desk. OBX. Then it's a desktop, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know these Perfect. people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, there was yeah, another we'll question see. from Chris there. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Uh, since Plex, Tom mentioned that his name wasn't on on the uh, high mom page. <laughs> yeah, he he did tease us a bit about that. You know, we would of course remind him that his name was actually on the medal, right on the. Front. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like I don't like. Uh, I'd already given it away. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some no. people just are never satisfied, are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there was another question in the chat, Ben. I don't know if you just want to throw that up because that kind of leads me on, on to. What oh, right. I was... Yeah. Uh, there is a question from uh, D DTScape. Uh, are there any future plans to make an Oberheim soft synth of any type? I think we so that, already have one. Don't uh, well, we? yeah, because that was going to lead me on to my next question, which was about the um, endorsement of the GeForce stuff. Yeah. So obviously, um, when OBE was originally released, um, it was the GeForce software OBE. Everybody knew what it was, you know, what it was doing, but yes. it obviously didn't have the Oberheim name on it. And then in version two, it did. And I've spoken to Dave, and he's kind of told me some tales of how things came about. Um, is it true that you went to Tom's house and kind of like knocked on his door and showed him your laptop screen with 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 OBE on it? Yeah, honestly, Dave's. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. If anyone listening who hasn't, you you really got to see Dave Spears' uh, video that he did. Yes, um, the, under the guise of showing you how to create a wonderful unison preset on an original Oberheim 80 voice. And, uh, and it was just a brilliant video where he spends something like 15 minutes building up a sound only at the end to, to mention, by the way, everything you've been hearing is this new plugin. Um, yeah. I thought it was brilliant. I'm obviously a huge fan of, of the old, uh, the old Oberheim, uh, SEM and its sound and, I was I was blown away with how good it sounded, and I I was going up to visit Tom and Arinda. Went to his house, said, "You got to watch this," and showed him this <laughs> video, and told him quite honestly, I I I've played a lot of Oberheim plugins. I would have been happy to find one that I thought really sounded like an Oberheim. I think many of them actually sound very good. They just don't mm -hmm. sound to my ears like an Oberheim. But what David and the team had done uh really to me sounded like this this really could be a, a real Oberheim and so Tom was Tom was certainly interested um and uh we worked with Dave and his team on just a few suggestions we thought it's you're almost there you know mm -hmm. but maybe we could do a few things that really to me are what stand out in uh what makes each voice unique and how you hear that as you're playing through an eight voice. Mm -hmm. And they were very accommodating and made a number of uh, nice improvements. And then um, Tom listened to it and loved it and gave it his, uh, yeah. his seal of approval and it became uh, Oberheim branded. So we're thrilled to partner with them. I think they're really a very talented team and all their plugins sound amazing because yeah. it's, it's the real deal. I mean, you meet Dave and these folks where they're, they are so, Dave has all these classic synths. He really understands them, has used them and knows why they're special. And, yeah. and they really, they do a great job in honoring them in, in their plugins. Mm, so. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're probably well aware, but um, Dave, he is so overjoyed at this you know collaborate and the, as soon as that came out you know with the, with the name on it was just he was like a kid in the candy store it was just a massive box ticked for him so yeah it's wonderful it a, it and i, I think really he, he, and, he and tom have really become great friends it's really wonderful yes. yeah so, uh, which is yeah it's fantastic great i'm glad it paid um, off because he's yeah. to hound the hell out of me because you've got to get that eight voice to sound absolutely perfect because we want to use that as measurements to do the OBE. They go, oh, <laughs> you did remember to tune the filter? He said, yes, I've done the filter, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and the programmer, yes, all, 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 the, all the channels on the programmer and, and the keyboard <laughs> controller, everything's done. It's done. It's done. All right, leave it. Leave it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so I know you can't, obviously, and you, I wouldn't expect you to tell us of any future plans, but I mean, are there actually plans for future Oberheim products? We don't need to know what they are. Well, we'd like to know, but we know we're not going to tell us. But I would say definitely the uh, you know we set up a a, a really great relationship uh, between Tom and Sequential, and it's a it's essentially an, you know an exclusive relationship with regards to future hardware, 
and we have an ongoing relationship with with GeForce with regards to software and um, that that's there's no reason to believe that that everything's just done so there's uh, I think it's a good good guess that there'll be there'll be future Oberheim products that's great um, to hear. Yeah. as a result and you know Tom is 86 years old and it's still want so wonderful to see how you know how enthusiastic he remains to be with uh synthesizers and yeah. it was great having him in synthplex and getting to hear him reminisce seeing all of the uh, all of his creations since 1970 in one room yeah. in, uh, in our synthplex museum uh, and he yeah. still he still lights up talking about all that stuff so it's great it, yeah one so uh, one of the guys that came to see you with with manny um andy um filmed tom when he was sat in the middle there with the four voice yes and it was just it was amazing to watch and just hear him speak i mean it's so great that we are still able to document and capture these moments with with these su such important people um and it's yeah it's, it's it's it really is important that we get these stories in the can because you know time marches on unfortunately as we you know as we mentioned at the top of the show um there were i just wanted to bring before we have a few more questions because we're getting to the point now where we will um say goodbye soon but i just want to mention uh chris Blythe. thank you very much for your donation another fantastic episode wonderful stuff much appreciated um to, uh where was the other oh yes dina perlman thank you uh thank you for your donation you shouldn't be donating to us we should all be donating to you uh yes, please do if you, yeah get alan r perlman donate. foundation do wonderful work yeah do absolutely wonderful work and um uh, yeah, GeForce and Mark as well. Fantastic guests and people. What a great community we have. The souls of the machine. Absolutely. Um, now, Wagyu always gets a question in when he drops some cash in the bank. Um, a new expander in the lovely and everlasting 19-inch rack format. Doubling as a desktop, maybe. Mm, who knows? Mm, who knows? Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Well, I have a uh, good suggestion. Um, <laughs> I have a... I have a great fondness for the expander in matrix 12 that was really for me the peak of that era um and uh you know michelle and i put a lot of work into that as did there were other engineers and graham and and jim letts and alex silverman uh you know that also contributed to it as well as tom of course and mm -hmm. and doug curtis he made um he did you know, we, we collaborated with him on new chips for that product. And uh, so I'm, I've, I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm quite fond of those. I'm, I'm really just functioning as an advisor for Tom and for Sequential and Focusrite and, uh, and some other companies as well. And I, I'm, you know, I've been doing this for 42 years now, so I'm not, um, I'm perfectly happy not being the guy who's making those decisions anymore. <laughs> um, if, if uh if if these companies want to pursue some of these other products or do entirely new products there's you know a great team of people thinking that stuff up if they'd uh if if they want to do yeah. a new yeah. expander or matrix 12 happy to talk Reissue about that yeah. the 33 was it was it 72 and 74s wasn't it what's that and it the, the uh curtis 33 72 yes, and 73, 72 wasn't it and the jewels, 33, yeah. 70 those two yeah. chips, yeah, the expander was the first time those chips were used, and they were uh, Doug Curtis. He's another sometimes unsung hero. Mm. One of just this, it's it's so special when you meet someone who's so unbelievably smart, but also so unbelievably unbelievably nice and kind. Yeah, Doug Curtis was that just totally passionate about synthesizers and wonderful to collaborate with, and uh, he passed away far too young, but. You know, thankfully, his his uh, widow Mary continues to uh, make Curtis chips, and that's what enabled us to have, you know, the original thirty three twenty Curtis filter yeah. and the OBX eight. Yeah. So Doug's yeah. Doug's work carries on as well, Excellent as well stuff. as Dave's. Yeah, who uh, yeah. we yeah. we sorely miss. You know, yeah. yeah, and but he yeah he really he gave us a wonderful gift to to you know also honor tom in this way mm, definitely um ben there was a great question from uh broccoli in the chat yeah uh 
Well, Broccoli, thanks, uh, Marcus, for joining the show. And ask what advice or suggestions would you give to younger people who are interested in pursuing a career in hardware design? Wow. Um, boy, so many answers to that. First of all, I'm just thrilled <laughs> yeah. when there's any younger people who are interested in, in hardware design. If uh, I'll tell you the, the things, if I've learned anything about design as well as business, and even the, you know, seeking out Tom's trademarks or any of those things. If there's one, uh, one characteristic that I think is essential, in fact, is more important than being the smartest or the, the most educated or the most talented is tenacity. And that you, you know, you have to be, uh, and the best thing you can be is, you're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to have uh, issues. You're going to have technical challenges. Um, and and the real test is, are you someone who just, you know, I'm seeing a spinning wheel here, so I must have frozen again. Yeah. Did, did I freeze again? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Just a bit. I, I, I'm back. Yeah. I don't know where I left off. Tenacity, you know, is is the main point. Just um, yeah, you got to stick with it. I've I've told the story before. The DSX was the first product that was just uh, I I was kind of solely responsible for, and I had um, I designed. I still have my original spec. I designed every feature I wanted in a sequencer in it without even thinking about what it would take to do it. And then I had to actually do it. And it, mm. I hit a point when I was, I was completely stuck. I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to, to finish this. And yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I was 19 years old. And uh, I, uh, I, we didn't have the term ghosting back then, but it really <laughs> did cross my mind a few times that maybe one day I'm just gonna not show up for work. Cause I don't even, <laughs> I can't even face the notion of, of quitting and I'll just, you know, I'm just going to hide. I'm just going to run away from this problem. And yeah. fortunately I, uh, somehow found, found the will to continue and was able to solve the technical problems. And I feel really lucky having learned that lesson so young because there's not a project I've worked on that hasn't had that, uh, that, uh, I'll say the PG 13, the, the, Oh crap moment. Mm -hmm. um, where you just think, oh, wow, we've, we've hit a real technical challenge. Don't know if we can overcome it. And that early experience made me realize it's just, you can always overcome it. You just, it's just a question of whether you're going to stick with it. And uh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So stick with it. And with uh, it. there you go. Wise just, and just, just be, just be doing things. That's how, yeah. you know, for me, if, 42 years of a body of work is just is a result of just 42 years of just still keep on doing it. And at some point yeah. you're old and you realize, wow, I guess we've made a lot of products. That's kind of cool. <laughs> um, before there's, there was one last question in, in the chat before that. I just want to say thank you ever so much to Richard Hilton. Thank you for your donation. Much appreciated as always. Great to have you uh, hanging around in these parts. Um, yeah. There was a question from Andy, I think, Ben, in the um... yeah, sorry, yeah, come <laughs> on, lost it what there for a second. Uh, yeah, Andy wants to know what the uh, little modular is to the right of the Moog it's over your ah. left shoulder. Yeah, that it, one. wasn't this explained oh, yeah. in the video? Seven hundred, isn't it? Seven hundred yeah. lab, lab. It's, yeah. it's seven hundred lab. I wish, I wish I had a complete mm. seven hundred. In fact, I was, I was actually at Roland headquarters just last month and visited their museum and spent a, spent quite a bit of time just playing with their 700 they have set up and working there because it was mm. it was just a lot of a lot of fun to play with that this but the sound of the 700 is really really wonderful and that's i i kind of liken that to they, they made the lab version i think it was intended for schools it's kind mm. of like their version of an arp 2600 it's just one cabinet three oscillators and uh, two envelopes, a filter and amplifier. And it's just, 
it sounds really cool. So I'm I'm happy to have at least a piece of that uh, 700 Legacy. Mm, yeah. yeah. Cool. So I've got I've got a question for you. With that impressive background, um, yeah. Desert Island Synth. Which one Matrix would you 12. rescue from a burning fire? Matrix Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's just still my favorite. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. like I could do anything. I mean, I did when I was doing session work, and everything. It's like Matrix Twelve was was just always the go to. And I just, I mean, I love I love all my synths. <laughs> um, <laughs> Quick, but, tell them uh, before they start yeah. getting upset. <laughs> if I got if I have to pick one, it's the Matrix Twelve. Yeah. Yeah, and any particular reason why that Actually, that one? I should preface it at the risk of it sounding like a sales pitch. If I could only pick one, I'd probably actually today would pick the OBX8 because that's the one I would feel most confident is going to keep working because <laughs> the, the, uh, the amount of time that I had to spend during development of the OBX8 just continuing to fix these units was, I boy, I, I got so tired of constantly having to open them up because it's just, there was always one thing or other that just kept going wrong. So get them done oh, properly, guess... mate. Yeah, <laughs> you have to you have to send them to Kent to get them done get them properly. Done. Yeah. Uh, by the I way, is that is that an SX down in the bottom corner there? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see. There's it's well. What's your four or eight? Door. There's a uh, well. There's a. Uh, I guess I have to move out of the way. <laughs> there's a <laughs> full voice. The Oberheim starts with a two voice, then the four voice, mm. nice. and over here you got the OBX, mm -hmm. the OBSX, OBXA. It's kind of in the shadows. There's a DMX and DSX, then OB8, Matrix 12, Expander, nice. and uh, Matrix 6 and uh, DS2. So nice. That's, that's a whole uh, lot of Oberheim. That's a and lot of sequence, yeah. digital sequencer on the top and all. Yeah. yeah, the DS the, that was Tom's first digital sequencer. That's a, it was a pretty clever, clever mm. box mm. back in seventy. When was that? Seventy two or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. early, early. Crazy. So early, the, the one thing back. I would like to come back. I mean, and I love Oberheim synthesizers, but I absolutely adore the DMX as a drum uh, machine. Yeah. Yeah, that was if, that was good fun. Yeah, and I I, I only played a small part in the DMX, um, mainly in how it would integrate in with the system and so on. Though I do, I do enjoy the fact that I am one of the four people clapping on the hand claps. So oh I, wow, I, hey, I, there you go. Know that I've been on a, a lot a lot of records. I was uh, going to yeah, say yeah, result, this... so. <laughs> yeah. pretty Where's you can't get like check? some sort of royalty for that, isn't it? <laughs> only. <laughs> <laughs> that would, that would be um, nice. couple of quick questions from the chat uh, and i'm only doing this because they have paid us money actually no one one's not a question this is from andy uh, who you met a couple of weeks ago thanks again to marcus for his amazing collection history and discussion it made the event very special to all of us uh, so yeah oh, and, it was, and it was it was great, was great uh, for andy and manny to do that for us as well um um there was one question here uh, from uh, Master Machetier, I think I've pronounced that correctly. Mm. Uh, five bucks, thank you very much indeed. What do you feel like the legacy of the OB6 will be? That's a good question. I think the OB6 really does a great job of standing alone as its own distinct Oberheim synthesizer. It has, it has this real Oberheim character, but it has a lot of capabilities that were not on any other Oberheim synth. And uh, and a lot of flexibility so i think it's a i think it kind of stands on its own it was never mm -hmm. attempting to be like an exact replica of any specific oberheim so i think it stands on its own in the same way that you know uh a matrix 12 is just another is a different oberheim than the ob series or mm -hmm. the four voice and so on but yeah. it's a it's a it's a great synth yeah absolutely well marcus look um we've had you for an hour and we are so so happy that you you gave us your time today so thank you ever so much yeah, um That's if people really want to learn more about the the obx8 um there's so much stuff out there not least of all alex ball's new video that came out yesterday i believe uh yeah, where he got it. his hands on an obx8 and just does some great stuff oh come for the obx8 stay for the cowbell watch the video you'll know what i mean it's, <laughs> it's brilliant
absolutely brilliant um but yes oberheim.com can't get any simpler than that for an address and all the information is there um loads of stuff around and uh, i think we we showed the video that was released a few weeks ago of yourself dave tom and the other guy's name escapes me please help me oh, tony caravitas that's it caravitas yeah. yeah so yeah that was a really that was a great video to have um put out and really interesting so yeah some some fantastic stuff but uh, marcus thank you ever so much we're gonna let you get on with your day um All thank right. you for joining us um please you know feel free to come back anytime you want and um if you're back in the uk sometime you know do let us know that would be fantastic mm. to to hook up. push for that to. matrix 12 if you can yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i don't know who you have to call but... <laughs> matrix 12 and the dmx yeah yeah and, and then we'll be Got it. Fantastic. <laughs> it's Marcus, it's been my pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Pleasure's you. all ours. Thank, Thank you ever yeah. so much. We'll, we'll see you soon. Take care. Take uh, care, buddy. Bye bye. Marcus Ryle, everyone. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah, it's just the one thing I love about <clears throat> doing this is the money. No, it's not. It's it's <laughs> it's getting to meet people who have had such a significant impact yeah. on the things that we know and love around us today yeah um and to be able to say thank you and and get to know that information that you know you would and this is the again it's the, it's the beauty of the internet i mean the internet's got some good sides and some bad sides this is a good side because you know 10 years ago 20 years ago you you'd never have a chance of speaking to somebody like marcus with all of his it's all straight no. from the horse's mouth, isn't it? You know, yeah. there's no dispute in any of this stuff that you're hearing. It's it's great. Yeah. It's great to and you have know, access to that. When we when we started the show with the thing about Don, it again it strikes me every time that we need to speak to these people as much as we can. Mm. We we need the likes of Dave Spears to make bright sparks. We need the likes of uh, all of those filmmakers the, you know the the guys that are doing the electronic voyager stuff uh, with michelle um every piece of you know because we are now getting to that point where those pioneers those um I, it's an overused term those geniuses those groundbreakers though those pioneers are getting to a point through no fault of anybody's where they might not be around much longer and we're seeing that happen and it's sad desperately sad yeah. um so we need to get this done and so to have people like marcus come on uh, and just share that you know that passion that information that enthusiasm those that it's just brilliant i'm gushing a little bit i'm kind of i'm still in a bit of i'm fangirling a little bit um <laughs> but yeah it was just absolutely brilliant and uh, thank you to everyone in the chat for your questions and your comments so far stick around we're here for another 45 minutes or so yet yeah. um there's a few bits of news to to talk about um but yeah so um marcus Ra, brilliant guest and uh, yeah. we've got a brilliant guest coming up next week um that we will announce at the end of the show so do stick around for that one um that's going to be a cracker uh right okay um shall we do some news let's have a look let's have a look um there's not a huge amount well and what there is isn't um isn't that spectacular there's no sort of like earth shattering stuff i don't think so hmm. let's kick off let's kick off with this one because yeah i want to i want to be sarcastic oh. <laughs> i've gone from all this kind of happy gushy positive stuff i i, you know, I want to kick somebody in the teeth now <laughs> so, you missed so, the boat here, mate. Oh uh, yeah. Well, okay. Let's 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 put this oh, up on the screen. I, I disagree. Yeah. Go on. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Right here we go. Korg, the mini log base, mm -hmm. was announced uh, a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Or yes, was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember now. Anyway, look. The Korg Mini Log Base has been launched. It's six hundred and forty-nine UK pounds, whatever that is in, in other people's currencies. It's be it's a very limited edition version mm -hmm. of the Mini Log. What's different about it, you ask? I hear. Well, it's got the word "base" stuck on the end. Okay. It's got a black case with this wonderful kind of swirly pattern design. Uh, yeah. Let's just bring let's bring a picture here. 
Um, so yeah, I mean it, it. It looks nice. Oh look, it's got black and red keys. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now we, it's kind of pro synth network colours. I'll I'll grant you. They should have called it the mini log PSN yeah. or something like that. that would, yeah. I would, then I wouldn't be be so. Anyway, my it's it's got a hundred specially curated bass patches. Um, but other than that, other than that, it is exactly the same as a regular Korg mini log, except. You go to Google right now, whatever <laughs> neck of the woods you're in, and find the price of a regular Korg mini log. And the cheapest I found it in the UK was three hundred and seventy nine ninety nine. Mm. Do the math. Mm. Uh, I, I, I am. Tell me, somebody, please, please tell me why this is two hundred and seventy pounds more. Anyone? Bling. <laughs> uh, I, well, I don't really know, <laughs> but I do like it. I think that the Why? price. That, I just, I just think what that it, it looks nice. It looks okay. nice. It's customized. Yeah, yeah, it's a special edition. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I wouldn't mind that, knowing that not many other people had it. Uh, I, I think the mini logs sound okay, but this is Korg. When they say not many being made. How many yeah, thousands yeah. is that? Well, well, well yeah. now you <laughs> say that. Um, our, our, Two our billion. Good, our good friend, our good friend Ian Cole, who is a yep. Korg distributor and seller, right. or reseller, oh, I don't know what the official term is. Um, mm. He he has told us, he's informed us that uh, 150 are coming to the UK. 75, and this is Ian's estimate. 75, uh, possibly in January, and the next 75. Uh, maybe around May time, but that's kind of a guesstimate, really. But 150 in the UK, so one would imagine maybe 149 and tie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many they'll send to the US. What you know about your know, continental Europe? But you know they're the sort of numbers we're looking at. So we're probably talking low thousands. Mm. Uh, it's clever marketing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Respect. Well, it's, it is in a way you know I, I get you know make it limited edition make it desirable give it a paint job yep there's i'm trying to find the bit in here about the keys Korg's Korg's reason apparently for producing keys that were black and red was that black and white keys or white and black keys whichever way around you want to call it are intimidating they're yeah. scary yeah they are like old films zebra crossings yeah, and I'm just, I'm, yeah, I mean, like, Ben, I'm looking around here and I'm bleeding petrified. Look at all of the, No, I'm really not. <laughs> I, I don't get it. And Mark Barnes made a comment in our Facebook chat. I mean, he said, look, you know, I've, well, I think one of his key tiles is all black. Mm. You know, it, it, if you know what you're doing, you, the colour doesn't necessarily matter. Um, but, yeah, it was just odd. I just think this is an odd thing to do. Art and uh, fashion. Yeah. The, loads they're of slim mini -logs. keys as well, aren't they? They are slim keys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't like slim keys, so mm. it's for that reason I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I just look. I mean, Korg. I've I've sung Korg's praises a lot in recent years because of of the the so-called big three. They're the ones that are um, innovating. I believe in the. What's the in the in the the area of the market where most of us can play? Okay, so you know Yamaha and Roland are doing amazing things with the big thousands and thousands of pounds workstations and and all that kind of stuff. Korg are doing stuff like Mini Log and you know all the other log stuff that they've been doing. Really cool, very in, you know uh, intuitive and great sounding stuff. And I just think they've kind of dropped the ball on this. I think somebody reached down the back of the sofa at Korg, found enough parts to make a, a small number of mini logs and a large bag of weed. And they smoked <laughs> the weed and said, what can we do with this? Oh, hey, let's paint it black and red. And we'll send it out into the world. That's why I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it yeah. comes with an aroma of, of um, the finest uh, yeah, it's very Peruvian herb. It looks nice. I, you know, yeah, 
yeah, does black and red nice. or black and red, you know, is a great colour set as we know. I've seen that um, front panel type of design on something else before. Yeah. Well, a lot of people uh, compared this with the AFX station, the Novation, uh, which was... A, yeah. 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 But at least that was different. It wasn't just a paint job. There was there was stuff going on underneath it, uh, the hood that made it absolutely different. Mm. This is just a mini log, and they've called it the mini log base, although there is... I don't... Even on the front panel, look, it just says mini log. Doesn't say mini log base. Um, it does nothing different. I mean, if it if it was a dedicated base synthesizer with a whole bunch of stuff taken away and a bunch of new stuff added to make it specifically a base synth, I could understand it. But it's not. It's just a mini log. Nobody is going to get anything out of this. You might, <clears throat> obviously, you can't get the hundred preset patches. Well, I'm sure somebody will dump that out as sysx at some point and it'll be on the web um that's I, who it's aimed for is it no i i'm sorry i just don't get it yeah. I, I think that people it, i think like bass players might say oh i might i might get one of them try a bit of synth bass in a few tracks i think that they're trying to reach a new market maybe, with well, it maybe uh, yeah yeah, yeah. um maybe. Uh, I well, think that that is the reason for the. I was thinking zebras are quite stressful as well, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I think that is the reason for the colour change yeah. on the keys. Yeah, it's it's just very odd. I mean, look, yeah, it's it's got this lovely now kind of red wood panel at the back. Oh, yeah. red wood. Um, <laughs> it's. I just. I'm sorry. I. I. Yeah. I'm really. I'm baffled by that one, and I'm sure they'll all sell, and they'll sell very well, and they'll become classics um, on the second-hand market in a you know a few years' time when you can't get them anymore. But yeah, and then they do mm. M1 covered in tin foil. Oh, don't <laughs> even get me started on the Nautilus M1 stuff. You know, it's it's not. Easy. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not going there. Okay, I'm not going there. Go it's on, no, Go on. no, I refuse. <laughs> I, refuse. I want to hear what's what's going on. No. Mm. <sighs> right okay um let's let's talk about something that's not so oh here you go here's one for um all you uh kind of diyers out there now i need to double check i think this is yeah this is still available so um dreadbox have released the erebus and the hades in kit form um again they've probably reached down the back of the sofa found enough bits there but i thought oh i can't be bothered to put Tell you what, lads, chuck them in a box, charge 320 euros, and they can build it themselves, which is what they've done. Um, mm. And you get the case included as well. So this is uh, the Erebus, um, which is yeah, it's, it's a great little paraphonic uh, analog synth. Um, has a, a very uh, dedicated and loyal following. Um, and they do not make these as the units anymore. They're basically... It is essentially selling off the spares. Look <laughs> at that there, <laughs> though. Before you proceed with ordering this DIY kit, note that we do not offer customer support in case your build does not work properly. Yeah, oh, they, well, at least they're being honest. Yeah, but that's a bit mad, though. Wow, that's a brilliant selling point. <laughs> so there's that, and so that's the Erebus. But unfortunately, if you want the Hades, um, Hades gone bye-bye. Hades sold out, I think. I just want to double-check. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, Hades sold out. That's the cheaper oh. one. Um, they gone. That's wow. the little base synth. So um, yeah, it's just the uh, the Erebus that's um, that's left. Yeah. But you it's know, gonna, it's going to be phone calls, isn't it? Is it? Hello, okay, sir. Um, yeah, I got this kit and <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work. Can you look at it for me? <laughs> no, yeah. we we, we don't support anything <laughs> afterwards. It's ETI yeah. forty six hundreds all over again. Yeah, I it? barely can support myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I did look at these uh, and think, yeah, that's that's pretty good. That because it, mm. it will give you a bit of. I know you. It's basically just clipping things together in these, isn't it? There's no, there's no real knowledge. You don't have to be like I Kent to this. put one of these together. Uh, I, I had know. a look at the bits that was in it, and it it didn't look excessively complicated. That doesn't look. Yeah, yeah too, too hard, does it? I think even no. I think it's a, a ribbon cable and and screwing it into the case. I think that's it. Okay. But uh, and and for the 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 saving, 
on on the made you know the pre-made version then it's worth doing if you if yeah. you don't mind the, but it's just that disclaimer that's just got me absolutely <laughs> puzzled that because there could be bits that fell off in, in transit and yeah you, you've got no <laughs> you've got no comeback at all well I, I guess if you're clever enough um you get it you check everything to make sure it's all there and then if it isn't you can uh speak to them but yeah it's yeah why not you know why not if you've got a box load of parts and you need a bit of cash then sell them off and um, there are pl there's more than enough people that will put, put mm. those together um and there'll be people that i'm sure will offer their services hey you know you buy it i'll put it together and yeah maybe there's some clever sod that's gone out there and bought some in bulk builds them sells them on that's why they sold cash. out yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah why not but you know dreadbox has a, a great following um those that have them love them a lot uh so uh, yeah all power to them but there you it go um good sounding stuff uh, so yeah if you want the what was it the erebus is in stock but the hades is is out of stock according to dreadbox so unless somebody has got stock elsewhere um mm. then yeah there you go right that's that what else have we got in the world of music technology news uh anything that boils my piss today oh um <laughs> Let's see. Let's. Uh, there is. See, I, I added this to the list, and then last night, speaking to Ian, um, he informed me that to use this piece of free software, which is you know being given away by Isotope, you actually need to own a couple of other bits of of their software that you have to pay for, which I don't own. So this is absolutely useless to me now. Um, but if you do own Ozone. Or what's the other one? I can't remember now. Um, is it Neutron? I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is um, Audio Lens, which is reference audio from anywhere. Basically, it's a plugin where you can um, you know, get reference tracks to do your mastering. So, you know, if an artist comes in and says, I want it to sound like this, and you get that, and you can use this this software with in conjunction with, now, of course, I find this out, um, with... Uh, ozone 10 or neutron 4 if you don't own that this is absolutely useless to you and apparently according to ian the installation process is a right pain in the backside oh. so, but i haven't bothered because there's no point i've just mm. I've, i i downloaded it and installed it uh, or yeah, downloaded it through the the portal um but i haven't done anything with it um so yeah uh, i won't bother but an interesting tool um mm. you know if if you're in you know the world of mixing and mastering and your you know reference tracks are a thing for you then this is a useful tool and if you have ozone and neutron uh, ozone 10 and neutron 4 specifically um this is a nice little freebie any thoughts on that um well i don't have the software either i've recently mm. uh bought um rx10 which um yes I, i'm enjoying and Mm. finding it quite witchcraftery <laughs> yeah uh but as for this i mean it's great if you've got the software but essentially it's it, it, it it's just to promote the, the 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 stuff isn't it really yeah yeah um yeah sorry i was just reading uh something from andy in the chat which i'm just setting up because he's just reminded me there is this and it does need um hello fiona apparently jim's <laughs> here jim glue yeah wow get him special, upstairs special guest special all right special guest <laughs> bring him in um, so anyway yeah there's um audio lens if you have ozone 10 neutron 4 you can use this it's free get it from isotope absolutely free of charge um before oh look at that there he is Give us a wave. <laughs> they all end up here, you know. They do. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> More slaves. <laughs> hey. All right, Jimbo. Can you hear us, by the way? Probably not. No. All right. So his, he's brought um, your Insonic, hasn't he? Yes. Oh, look at this. Oh, he's, he's got the CS80 there now. He's, he's happy. Yeah. 
Um, well, whilst Jim's getting seated there, shall we? Um, <laughs> let's let's do this because um, Andy's just reminded me of this. Uh, this came so uh, this came through on the news t- the news ticker at Gear News th- this afternoon, and I refused to cover this one because I would not be nice about it at all. Uh, <laughs> I guess teenage engineering are the apple of the music technology world, aren't they? Um, mm-hmm. Lots of people adore them. Lots of people really hate them. There doesn't seem to be much in between. This sort of stuff does not help warm them to uh, to me. They've released a choir, a collection of intuitive singing dolls made out of wood. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this This follows hot on the heels of teenage engineering beer. Really? Really. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, I think uh, they've been. That's what's happened, isn't it? They've been testing that beer. They've all got too drunk, and they've come up with it. No. They couldn't find the mixer because it had fell outside its chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they and... thrown it out with a cigarette packet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they come up with this all Let's, plastered. Shall yeah. we have a? Shall we have a listen? Here yeah. There we go. Yeah. Here we go. Go on. After watching that, I quite like it. (laughs) And I know for a fact that my son, Sam, would absolutely love that. So it's just a... I know that he'd go mad over that. And it's just a a young person thing, isn't it? There is something about the sound. I, 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 I would give you, I would grant you that the sound of those is evocative but i can imagine you you'll get a bit pissed off with it after a oh, while yeah. because but i mean not only can you play them as a choir using uh what's it a thousand pound op1 or whatever yeah um but apparently if you bring them close to each other they do things as well um wonderfully bonkers I think wonderfully that's... bonkers yeah 249 pounds per doll Ah. So if you want a choir, um, there's what eight of those there. I don't know. You do the maths. That's uh, fifteen hundred quid. Wow. But you know, if you're a yeah, teenage you've engineering think, fan, you're, you're probably yeah, minted anyway. Yeah. If I bought them, I, I, I've got to think who else is crazy enough to spend that amount of money on some bits of wood. Tyon went. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you know, he's put his order in. Yeah. He's probably sat there right now drinking from drinking teenage engineering beer, yeah, and getting off on these, um, yeah. yeah, putting his order in one of every one to play with his new TX6 and OP1 field or whatever, yeah, with his magnifying glass so he can use his mixer. I'm yeah. just a little little puzz- again puzzled by. Uh, I don't know. I, I applaud in you know people that are different. Uh, and they're certainly different, but they're expensively different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's great. Um, I, I I I wouldn't actually buy it, but I'd like to see people using it. I, I'd like yeah, to yeah. see what they could get out of it, and it's not going to be many sales of it. I can't imagine. Apparently, to stop the, when the doll singing, you smack them around the head. I, <laughs> look, it seriously, it says to cease the singing abruptly. Give the doll a reprimanding smack, like some that's, tyrannical choir master. That's it. I'll have a uh, I'll have a bottle of doll beater, please, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's oh insane. dear. Yeah. Eight, eight choir members, each individually, two hundred and forty-nine dollars. 
Jeez. Oh, well. Good luck to him. That's all I can yeah. say. All I can say. But yes, again, um, an- another sofa with a bag of weed been found. <laughs> That's what people yeah, are coming up with. That, anyway, that, um, look, mm. it's Jim Bloody Glue, everyone. Hello, Jim. Hello, oh. Jim. <laughs> Depositing a... I oh, forget what it is now. It's an Insonic. Yeah, EPS 16 Plus. EPS 16 mm. Plus. There we go. At last, at last. Indeed. Are you excited now, Kent? Do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, pretty, Not that pretty excited. Ready. Pretty ready. <laughs> anyway, Jim, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, the journey down wasn't too bad. It was a bit good. sticky, but yeah. Oh, maybe don't want that. No. Are you uh, st- sort of stopping in the area for a bit, are you? But are we going straight back? I've, I've got a call to make in Woolwich and then off around to Zoe's. Oh yeah, because Zoe lives down this way. Yeah, cool, cool stuff. What's been up in your world? Any, any, what's e-momming going yes. on? Yes, yeah, played Stoke last night. Ooh. Um, that was really good, really good fun. Played a new track as well that went down really well. So. Nice. Oh, any more coming down this this kind of south of the Watford Gap? Or I don't, I don't know. I've not actually sort of seen that many. Um, I'm tending to sort of uh, just try and stay within like a couple of hours drive okay um, but yeah you never know nice one to, uh, go a bit further afield wouldn't, mi- wouldn't mind playing the uh, the bathy mom when there's a space available That'd oh yeah. Cool. yeah 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 cool now i, I have to ask as we ask of all of kent's visitors um how are your gentlemen's vegetables did they get the <laughs> tip- typical did you get the, the nelly treatment the nelly greet <laughs> i was because thankfully because i'd been warned I was, I was You've got a box on. <laughs> no, I've been practicing all my Tai Chi blocks. So yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I always kept, when I come in, I always sort of go to the side. So when she comes up, it, yeah. she hits me in the side there and not in yeah. the, 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 the precious bits. But yeah. oh, good stuff. <laughs> good, good stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, we, we've just been discussing uh, teenage engineering's wooden dolls. Are you perplexed or keen? Uh, perplexed. Just, yeah, it's just an odd w- one, isn't it? WTF, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I I read somewhere apparently this was one of the first things they wanted to do as a company, and they've only just now been able to to successfully do it. Yeah, it's one of but... the last things they'll do as well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, could, I I yeah, I I, d- I doubt it. I, I doubt think it's it. The, but... They're Sinclair C five, isn't it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they can afford to to have follies like this, I suppose, at some point. But there you go. Um, yeah, and we've what else have we been discussing? Not, it's not a huge amount out there, really. Um, you missed Marcus Ryle. You're going to have to watch it on Catch Up. It was a great interview. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, a great interviewee, should I say? Was, you know, mm. We were just bunging questions at him. Um, <laughs> let's crack on because we've got about twenty minutes left, and I know Kent's now desperate to play with his new toy. Um, Everyone likes a freebie, especially a freebie unlike audio lens that you don't need <laughs> to have uh, expensive software to use it with. Um, and one came up in my feed. You guys probably don't know about this yet because this literally came up in my little news feed earlier on. Um, audio plug-in deals, who often have some really great deals, um, as it says in their name, um, have got um, IK Multimedia's t rex Classic Clipper available completely free of charge for the next 13 and a half days. That's great. Um, which yeah. is yeah, that's I I love T Rex. It's a, it's a really great collection, and and every now and again they they sort of put out one of these at free, so you can slowly build up your your own T Rex collection there. But if you want a free version, uh, full version of Clipper, uh, it's there. Uh, go to audiopluginDeals dot com, I believe is the yeah audio no so audioplugin dot deals. There you go. They've got one of those fancy wow. names. Um. Yeah. So that million dollars seems a lot for it. Though, it? Sorry, thirty million dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going down all the time. Look at that. Yeah. If you wait until the last minute or the last second. On this one. <laughs> <laughs> um. But talking of IK Multimedia, Eric Norlander pinged uh, pinged us. Uh, was it this morning? I can't remember. And he said, "Can mm. you talk about our stuff?" And I said, "Yeah, of course we can do that." Um, because uh, they have released a whole bunch of uh, libraries that have been created by Eric. Um, let me just bring some of these up here. To get, make sure I get the right one. There are so many IK Multimedia tabs. Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. So, um, eight sound libraries have been uh, released for um, 
sample tank, which is their big, you know, sample uh, engine. Um, there are uh, Mojo Synthesis, which combines five of the new sample tank sound libraries, each created by by Eric. Um, Alien Harbors delivers cinema, uh, cinematic collection of atmospheres and pads and sweeps. Uh, using such things as Oberheim Matrix 12s, Profit VS's, Profit 5s, Waldorf Microwave, uh, Korg D W8000, Elisa's Andromeda. Circuit Damage is a, a beautifully flawed collection of carefully curated hardware synth... Oh, the marketing people have been busy on this one, haven't they? Um, delightfully unpredictable as well. Uh, Ring of Doom, <laughs> I had one of those the other day, um, <laughs> is a library of all ring modulation synth sounds, synth, synth, synth sounds with a metallic robotic quality. Uh, Swarm features samples of all 22 oscillators from the Norlander Wall of Doom. I should, no, actually, I should do this, shouldn't I? The Norlander Wall of Doom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, went, it went all stereo. Yeah. Did it really? Did, did it even go? Oh, 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 oh yeah. Look at that. Bit of chorus on there as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so 22 oscillators from the Wall of Doom and Vector Vision is vector synthesis so profit vs yamaha sy22 uh ppg stuff um and then three more virtual instrument titles extraterrestrial saxophone bionic drums we have the technology and best of all um the syntronic synth x this is the the synth du jour isn't it for for people recreating obviously we've, we've had elker x and there's the uh exils labs one and there's uh this now sample based uh, version uh, UVI have got a sample based version as well Yeah. Um, so Mojo Synthesis gets you five of those uh, Alien Harbour, Circuit Damage, Ring of Doom Swarm and Vector Vision for $149.99 of your US dollars or your European Euros uh, if you want to buy them individually they're $49.99 each uh, except um, the extraterrestrial saxophone and the bionic drums which are 79.99 each and they all work in uh, sample tank um there is also a special pricing offer with this thing called sample tank squared uh, go to ikmultimedia.com for more information on those um it yeah. is is anything that works in sample tank also compatible with uh, that that syntronic yeah well the the synthex is uh syntronic so yes i would believe right. so right yeah it says here, yeah, I, i've got syntronic uh but i haven't got sample tank um, yeah so i think if you have syntronic instruments they work in syntronic and sample tank right but if you don't have it it'll it won't work in sample tank alone I th it's something it's right. something like that they've, they've done something like that but it, yes it works in syntronic too um which work equally as well as libraries inside sample tank for Oh, okay. Uh, so no, maybe you can. I think that's yeah. 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 It yeah. does sound like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So fill your boots there. Another great button. And Eric's got a couple of videos out there, sort of telling you all about how he put some of those things together. Um, so that's that's worth looking into. Um, so they're available now from ikmultimedia.com. Um, I just got Tonex, the amp modeling stuff. Not that I'm a guitarist anyway, but I was just interested in how it uh, compared with other such things and um, seeing how it might work on synthesizers. So Ooh. I'm looking forward to, to messing around with that one. Um, any thoughts on that one, Kent? No. No? Do I came multimedia <laughs> stuff at all? No. Not really? No. Okay. Jim, yeah, any I've thoughts? Got, I've got a ton of IK stuff, um, mainly all their T-Rex plugins and everything. Mm. Um, you know, that... The, when they have their special offers, they're, they're pretty good. Um, I've got, I think I got Syntronic ages ago. It, it remains fairly unused these days. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I can't see myself really sort of getting that excited by this. I, I kind of also, I know Richard Hilton's mentioned it before, their, their whole installers and authorization thing yeah. is just oh, annoying. And, um, and it, if, if you want to re-download the libraries, after 180 days of your purchasing you have to buy a token to gain access again which i think is odd oh it's really? just all, all yeah. very very weird um i mean of, of their stuff that i do use 
pretty much staying day out. It's, it's their 1176 and LA-2A yes. um, clones. They're just really good. Mm. Um, they get a lot what, of use, but nothing What perplexes me, and uh, don't get me wrong, their, their sample-based instruments are very good, but in a world where we are like inundated with proper modelled mm. analogue versions or you know, vin uh, virtual analogue versions of a lot of these things, a big four or five gigabyte sample library is 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 okay, but it's not quite, you know. Yeah. When you think you can get that, um, you know, the Elka X from Cherry Audio for what, thirty nine dollars, mm. that's half the price of their uh, sample based library and takes up a fraction of the yeah. disk space. I'd soon have the disk space. Mm, yeah, I think that takes a lot of us would. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, there you go. Um, IKMultimedia.com uh, if you want to uh, explore those instruments there. And uh, yeah, uh, what else have we got? There's only a couple of things, and they're both from France. Um, so one, and I was, uh, I did mean to ping you today, Ben, to see if you could download this and, and give us a, a little bit of insight. Uh, because you have a UVI Sonic Pass. I do. Um, but they've just released Urkan Prepared P Piano Do, uh, which is a second version of it. I've got the first one, and it's very yeah. interesting. Um, so for those that don't know, and I hope I'm not insulting anyone's intelligence here, but a prepared piano is a, a piano that has had things attached to the, the strings or to the hammers to give it a, another quality. You know, So for example, thumbtacks on the hammers or um, erasers, uh, put in between you know some of the strings to sort of dampen the sound i think john uh cage was a big proponent of it i don't i wouldn't say he, I don't know if he was the first to do it but he was certainly one of the, the the most well known composers to use prepared pianos um and this is a yamaha c7 grand that's been recorded at ear Calm in france uh in the in the big studios there um i don't know how do prepared pianos do it for anyone Mm. I mean, there's if you've got um, Omnisphere, there's tons of stuff like this in there. Yeah. So, um, I'm not in any major rush to download, you know, to upgrade from the first one, but I will do. But it's not something that I, I use a great deal of. But it could be something that you just use in a a lead line or layer it up with something else. But it mm. tends to be more on the. Uh, ambient side of things really yeah. isn't it it's, or rhythmic it yeah, kind of it can yeah. turn the piano into quite a rhythmic you know especially if you're using i mean the the, the preparations that that are on offer here to choose from are, are quite extensive and sometimes fairly odd like they've recorded um the sound of the strings with iphones sitting on them which apparently gives it a very nice metallic twang um but as you can see all the different kind of you know if you've got erasers hammers mallets plectrums clothes pegs nuts and bolts and brushes and all i mean you can get i mean let, i'll tell you what let's play the demo you can hear actually some of some of these sounds here, going here, here we go uh oh yeah, hit play that helps good man <laughs> group isn't there um of, of three or four individuals who sit around a piano and one of them is at the keyboard and the others are playing the frame or the you know the, the legs or, or they're doing different things and they're playing like an entire piece from it it's, it's quite it's quite um inventive and, and imaginative but um i guess it has a limited use yeah uh, but if you've got something like Sonic Pass, 
it doesn't matter if you only use it once, does it? Because it's there just, you go. It, it's just the, the for a specific job. I mean, if you use it once and it, it, it's worked, then it's yeah. It's worked and it like a piano, though, didn't it? Well, yeah. But there is yeah. this thing that it's, that it's got this um, uh, sort of like built in. It's, you know, it's got all the UVI stuff, like built in sequences and arpeggiators that you can do all sorts of wonderful different things with the sounds uh, rather than just play them from a, a traditional keyboard um one of the ones i don't know if the preparation yeah it is in here um they've got an ebo and so they've been using an ebo on the piano and that oh. actually was a very nice sound yeah um so yeah it's uh, yeah it's horses for courses but um it's available now at a reduced price of 149 euros it's normally 299 because it is quite a big library uh, and it is this big Yamaha C7 Grand that they've sampled. And I do believe you can actually just turn all the preparations off and just have the piano if you want as well. Yeah. Um, but if you've got Sonic Pass, of course, then it's part of your $24, 24 euro a month subscription. And I believe there is an upgrade path for owners of uh, version one, which brings the price down uh, a bit more as well. And do you think so, they're visually selectable? Like you can choose what's done to the piano. Yes, you can choose. Um, so choose. if I just zoom in there, so you can oh. choose ranges of keys and preparations per oh. range. So you can have the same preparation across them all or multiple preparations across different strings. Um, so it's, it's quite configurable um, and yeah. you're able to do stuff that you probably couldn't do with a regular prepared piano because you're then a able to sort of layer the samples but it might just be something really subtle that you do to it right it just gives it a character yeah it, it doesn't have to be extreme that's quite a lot of uh options really yes uh, oh yeah compared to the omnisphere one it, it there's more control uh definitely mm. yeah. can the yeah, range go down to individual notes i i'm trying to remember i think it can because I've got the first one, I remember reviewing it when it came out it was a long while ago, and I was, I'd never really messed around with one of these, and I was very impressed about all the different sort of things you could do and get out of it. Most of it, I was sort of like, oh, that doesn't sound great, but sometimes you'd hit upon something, and go, oh wow, and you can, I think, uh, um, I'm pretty sure you can. I'm just having a look here. So each key, yes, you can equip each key with any two of forty-five different preparations. So yeah, it's that's and it's, a lot of control. And it's got all of the yeah. the UVI sequences and and um, effects yeah. in there as well. And you can use it in Workstation and Falcon. I'm actually quite excited about downloading this now. There I might you go. Well, it's not going to cost you anything, is it? Because you've already got it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still just teetering on the edge, uh, but given the price of things these days, I'm just like, oh, do I need to be? I, I need to cancel something before I take this out. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that by the end of the year, I'll have caved. It's worth it, I think. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it, it is worth it. It's a good yeah. one. Thank you. Too many, too many, too many knobs. There you go. I just figured that out as I was oh, delivering right, yeah. too many knobs. <laughs> is there such yeah. a thing? Uh, 20 bucks thank you ever so much um, for that it's greatly appreciated hope you're enjoying the show um, so yeah Urcam Prepared Piano 2 from UVI is available now and uh, it's available as an individual instrument also as part of their Sonic Pass subscription Brilliant. one last thing I said it was uh, the last two things were from France this one maybe not so much a big news thing but it does bring in some interesting bits and bobs and that is Arturia have just announced V Collection 9.1 which means I guess now that we're not getting V Collection 10 until next year because there's no point they wouldn't have released this only to have 10 come out very shortly after because this is normally the time of year isn't it that V Collection comes out so maybe we'll see one or two new separate instruments <laughs> first I think half. there's bits in 9 that I haven't used yet you really know, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 9.1's come out. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's a free update for all existing V Collection 9 owners. Uh, apart from a whole bunch of bug fixes, improvements, tweaks, and performance stuff, um, they've now got sound design tutorials built into each instrument, which I think is quite a cool yeah, idea. I think um, that's good. Uh, you've got Analog Lab enhancements. So, Analog Lab is their kind of all in one uh, thing that you can use. Um, 
all of their instruments in one place kind of thing so it's, it's kind of like uh, sort of like main stage in a way um so you can sort of house all of their instruments within this one interface uh universal browser accessibility minilab 3 integration which is very convenient because i just got a minilab 3 and i was playing with it last night and it's it's given back to well it's given this uh some of the capabilities that the key lab i that i've got although i've packed it away and i don't use it so much um where it's that kind of direct integration so every knob every slider um is automatically mapped um the display on the mini lab gives you feedback from the software so it's uh, it's that's, yep that works very well uh enhanced tagging and playlists so there you go some new browser features there for you ben to get all excited about that that did excite me yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> it's uh, every instrument now has nks certification for those people that uh work in that world um and also uh you can now specify the resource location for all of your stuff because uh, you know there's uh, things like the augmented series uh, quite heavily sample based um so you can now actually specify where those go rather than have it on your your main system drive so yeah free updates available now um from your account you just go in or just open up the uh, arturia service center and it'll be offered and you can just download and away you go v collection fans you you like a v collection don't you ben yeah yeah but yeah I've upgraded since, you know, regular, since mm -hmm. about five or something. Yeah, you yeah, know. same here. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's a vital part of my music making. I'd say, mm -hmm. especially getting ideas down, it's V Collection and OBE. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. I use. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it, it's pretty essential for me, you know, to, to stick with it. Um <clears throat> I do like the little. I, I like the idea of the tutorials. I think that's really yeah. good. It'd be yeah it, because the you know like if you're using the MS twenty, that's a synth that's always quite confused me. You know, mm -hmm. in the <laughs> I'd like to look at an MS twenty and think, ah, right yeah. now I know what to do. You know, and so I'm quite into that. It's like your personal tuition on it. Yeah, and yeah, it's a good uh, yeah, idea. yeah. It's it's great. I, I mean, say so it is one of those collections of instruments where there is something for every almost every eventuality what's missing is a decent drum machine or two because they had spark and they've stopped spark i think so um they're, they're kind of missing uh you know if, if they could do something like an oberheim dmx or a decent lin or, or something or a drum emulator uh, i know you can get the drum sounds in the emulator stuff but uh yeah um it would be nice if they had some classic recreation of drum machines and of course kent you're you're a convert to uh to v collection aren't you yeah, yeah. and you're a big fan of it you reckon their cs80 v is still the Good. the nearest one yeah. yeah how about you jim do you uh you, you v collection user uh, i'm not um the only thing i have uh Arturia wise is is uh i think analog lab light and pigments oh, yeah. of course i did pick up pigments when uh, mm. yeah, oh, yeah that was on offer I, yes it's decent it, really it is, is yeah I've n I, I keep promising myself to spend a lot of time with that but I, it is um i wonder if that'll ever make it into the collection itself i don't know because it's kind of a bit left field is it's not a, a recreation uh which yeah. their v collection is yeah. yeah interesting stuff but there you go if you're a v collection fan um the update is out now just open up your server center and upgrade and i believe gentlemen that is a show Wow, that it's gone quickly. I know. Yeah, yeah. Shall we tell everyone who our guest is going to be next week? Yes, Sorry. including um, me. <laughs> you know, <I> do. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has all happened very quickly. Um, uh, but we are beyond excited to announce that Kim Bjorn from Bukes will be joining us next week. Hot on the heels of Inspire yes. the Music, which I got the other day, and it's just incredible. It's one of those books that you could read from cover to cover. It's not obviously telling a story, but it does kind of go in chronological order. But it's also one of those things you can just leave on the coffee table and just pick up and go in, I'll just read that chapter about hip hop or I'll read that chapter about uh, guitar pedals. Or yeah, you know, it's, it's just a brilliant, brilliant thing. Of course, it's a beautiful, 
beautiful book. But Kim is coming on the show to talk about Bukes and everything they've done or everything they hope to do. So he will be on the show next week. I don't know. I've, I've not seen many uh, instances of Kim popping up on these sorts of shows. So no, it'd I be might good. be wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very happy to have uh, him join us next week. And then the week after that, who have we got? We've got someone, I'm sure. Uh, oh, yes. Um, Cherry Audio. Uh, Dan and Mitchell and possibly James as well will be joining us on November 25th. Three days after, of course, they announce their new instrument, which they've been teasing. So they'll be here to tell us all about that instrument. What could it be? I'm, no I'm, yeah, I, I've got no idea. I can't mm. wait. No, it was a it was a very cryptic oh, teaser. <laughs> <laughs> Not, um, but yeah, um, Dan and Mitchell and hopefully James, one of the, the the main sound designers that they have there, will be joining us uh, on November twenty fifth, um, and then we'll sort of be heading into the Christmas season. So we've uh, we've got some ideas for rounding off the year at some point, and um, yeah, we'll come up with those, but. Uh, Gentlemen, it's been a, a, an absolute pleasure. Um, thanks for letting me gate crash. No, no, pr hey, thanks yeah. for joining. It's nice great to see you, mate. It's great nice to, to see you. See you. Yeah. Um, what have you got planned? For, have you got any gigs coming up this weekend, Ben? I have. I have. I, I where mean, are you? How can people see you? I don't know where it is, but it's a place called the <laughs> Premier Lounge. Uh, that, <laughs> that's, uh, that's tomorrow. Uh, and I then love, uh, I'm look, off then. Sell it, for the week. Sell it. Yeah. Every gig is, I yeah. don't know where it is, but it's here and it's really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't got a clue, but we're on somewhere. How do you get to the place then? Oh, yeah. I find out in the day. You know, I'm not that <laughs> daft. I like it. I just set off not knowing where I'm going. Well, how do you manage to set off in time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll mention it to the lads in the band, like, where is this place tonight? You know, and Vicky, Vicky's good. Like, she she tells me where I'm going after time, and, and it's, it works out <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, dear. So, um, the wrong person, Robbie. Sorry? You asked the wrong person, Robbie. Yeah. I did, you yes. Yeah. I need to ask. <laughs> yeah, get her in. Where, get her where, in, absolutely. How about you, Kent? You've got, uh, you, you say you've got loads of Oberheims to work on. Of, yeah. of course, now you've got your new keyboard to play with. Yeah, but I'm, I've, got to, I've got to get all this stuff cleared out. Mm. Well, I, I need to take that hydrosynth off you, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> God knows where I'm going to put it. Oh, that there one. Is. Not, not this one. No, not no. that one. Right. Never this no. one. No. no. Never this one. Uh, shiny. He can have the little one. Yeah. He's not a good player. Oh, it's true. On. No, he speaks. He speaks the truth. <laughs> he speaks the truth. <laughs> Indeed. How about you, Jim? Um, so you've got stuff lined up. Yeah. So Thursday is the next um, Derby Emom. So at Dubrec. Yeah, at Dubrec. Or Dubrec, or whatever they call it. I'm not even sure how you pronounce it, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, oh, getting tapped by dogs here. Um, <laughs> oh, they love but you. Yeah. Yeah. So Thursday, seven o'clock, Dubrec, Bridge Street, Derby. Uh, come along uh, nice four, 14 acts um, oh 14 wow that's yeah. a that's a Cheery. yeah Cheery. should be good cool excellent stuff brilliant um i got a new toy by the way I, if you anybody watched kent show yesterday um i i got um i got a mini freak and it's oh. really really good it's yeah. so good well, it sounds it's, quite funky there, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you, I turned off that minute. show about half past five. Yes, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. Um, it's, as I said yesterday, um, the palette is so broad in what it can do. Really yeah. versatile. It's, yeah, it's just amazing how much they've packed into such a small, solid unit. It's... It's when, when you look at it, you think, mm, kind of looks a little bit cheapy, toyish kind of thing, gimmicky. Maybe it just makes some squeaky, gnarly little sounds. And that's what I thought about the, the Micro Freak until I actually got one. Um, and it is just, it, it sounds like, it, if you put that engine in a Polybrute body, and it would not feel out of place. That's how kind of, you know, rain... You know, it does big pads, it does... You know, it does all the gnarly stuff. It's yeah, it's just amazing, and yeah, love it. So, what I'm planning on doing 
if I can fit it in, is I was either going to do like a pre-recorded like you know review, sort of go through it, you know, explore it, you know, as I'm learning as I'm learning it, sort of thing, or do it live. And I wasn't sure which one to do because if I do it live, then people can ask questions and I can answer mm. them there and then. If I do mm. it recorded, then that takes a bit of time and effort, and it might be a while to, to get something polished out. But I don't know. Let us I'll know like, in the I chat. Think the, I think the live thing would work well. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah, maybe I'll live. just. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? Everybody yeah. like gets a synth and talks you through it. But if they're actually there asking questions, yeah. it's yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. live is better. Do it. Hour shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just take one over <laughs> I didn't leave that until about quarter to two yesterday and when I woke up this morning about it was my head didn't hit the pillow till gone to um, I woke up at eight no, actually I actually woke up at half past seven and I just went and checked and they'd only finished about an hour and a half before I woke up it was uh, just Robert and um, and Andy yeah. bless them <laughs> no lies. Anyway, um, yeah. So I'm going to be learning that this weekend, and or trying to anyway. And uh, yeah, cool. Um, so who have we got uh, coming up? Just to give some show. We've got Ramsey tomorrow at one o'clock UK time, uh, which which I guess the usual crowd will be on there. Um, then you've got Jamie, uh, who's on at six UK, I believe. Then Dom at seven. Uh, on Sunday um, and of course Sonic State on the Wednesday Gaz has been doing some stuff again and I'm sure Kent will be opening the pub up so lots and lots of things to to do over the coming uh, days um, thank you ever so, so much for everyone for joining us thank you for your donations if you made them that was absolutely fantastic thank you of course again to Marcus for joining us and um, we will be back uh, same time, same place next week with the wonderful Kim Bjorn from Bukes. I uh, need to make sure I get my pronunciations ready for that thing. And um, yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Enjoy your visit to Kent's Den. Um, don't get licked to death by the <laughs> dogs or Fiona. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, the dog. Oh. And, uh, yeah, we will see you all same time, same place next week. And until then, stay safe. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care and goodbye.